Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, uniform grid notation that I'll be using eventually to uh, to go through finite differences and finite volume methods uh, in CFD. Um, Alright, so up here I've drawn a uniform grid, uh, which means that we have the delta x and the delta y in this grid are all going to be the same. So I guess the first thing I want to say is like this is a grid describing some domain. Um, in this case, it's the physical domain is the same as the computational domain. You don't have to worry about that now until we talk about non-uniform grids and curvilinear grids. Um, but pretty much this can represent anything in space. Like if I want to talk about this plane of air right here, I can put this grid onto this plane of air and solve for the flow field variables like the pressure, the temperature, uh, the velocity at these discrete points, essentially. Um, these points here that you see... Um, you can solve for those, and that's how, and that's the way that CFD works, is that you solve, at least in finite differences, you solve for the flow field variables at these discrete points. So, here we have a uniform rectangular square uh, grid. The distance between every single point in the x direction, or i direction, is delta x. The distance between the grid points in the y direction, or j direction, is going to be delta y. So, in terms of the notation that I'll be using, especially when you're looking at the finite difference um, uh, derivatives and stuff that you're going to be plugging into the general uh, conservation equations, um, it's so we're going to look at this one point here. So I'm just taking this one random point um, in this entire domain, and we're going to come out here. So that point that I'm talking about is going to be called point I comma J. Uh, I'm calling it I comma J because in the X direction, we're labeling these points in, with I, and in the Y direction, we're labeling them with J. So then if I move one point over from that to the right, so I'm going to move one point over from that, I'm going to have an I plus 1, because we're moving in the X direction, so it'll be I plus 1 comma J, because we haven't moved anywhere in the Y direction. Same goes as if we move to the left here, so I'm at this point, I'm moving to the left one point, so we're going to say that's going to be I minus 1 J. Um, if I ended up moving two points out here, so from this point I move two points out, the point would be out here, and it would be I plus 2J. So now if we want to move in the Y direction, uh, the point will be I, so we're not moving anywhere in the X direction, and then we'll have J plus 1 because we moved up one point, and then here we'll have I because we haven't moved in the X direction, and we move down one point, so we'll have J minus 1. Um, when we get to some, some, of the, some of the schemes and finite differences and 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 a lot of the times in finite volume, you have to work with half nodes, um, and I'll explain those as we go with uh, with the different methods. But it's hard to explain it here. But you want to be you want to uh, evaluate some things at the half nodes. So at the half nodes, it'll be called um, in this case it'll be called i plus one half j. Back here, moving back, one will be i minus one half j. Up i j plus one half, and then down i j minus one half. This point here is the same as that one, which is i plus 1j. Um, so we call it half node stuff. Now the problem arises when you're uh, coding with a computer because um, I'm just going to talk from my experience with MATLAB. You can do it's the same with C and the same with Java, that kind of stuff. Is that when you index things, um, or you, you index numbers in an array or, or a matrix, uh, they're going to be whole numbers. You're not going to be able to say, I have the velocity u at i plus one half, or you know, point one half, or point three halves. Like it's ha it's going to have to be u, the velocity u at point one one or two one. Um, so you have to be really careful when you're when you're labeling um, when you're labeling the variables or calling them out in the array or the vector. You have to be really careful about how you label them. So one of the examples, um, just if you're coding in say you're coding in MATLAB. Um, so if you're coding in MATLAB, when you open up when you open up to look at one of your matrices, like let's just say you made a matrix that was a 10 by 10 um, for the velocity and you put every velocity point as one and that's your kind of initial condition. Um, you open up to look at your matrix and these aren't really straight lines, this doesn't matter. This is just me looking at the matrix, like the matrix of values are and so I'm looking at the values, these are all going to be 1 in here. So they're all 1. Um, 
And the way that MATLAB, MATLAB starts in indexing from the value 1, whereas I think C or C++ starts at 0, and some of the other programs start wherever they start. So you have to rem remind yourself that you're starting at 1. So what you can do is, these are called rows. I'm going to call this row 1, this is row 2, and so forth. This is column 1, column 2, and so forth. So what you have to be careful about is, especially when you're, I've run into problems when you're defining boundary conditions. Um, let's just say this is your, this is your domain, and you want your boundary condition, your left boundary, to have a velocity of two, and the rest of your boundary, and the best, the rest of your domain to have values of one. So what you need to do is you need to set this, you need to set this column here, to be twos. Um, so the problem that you run into is that. If you're using the IJ notation that I described earlier, you would be setting U, you have UIJ uh, is equal to some number. So when you set UIJ equal to some number, you'll say, okay, I want to set all the, um, I want to set all of these columns here. So ignore this for one second. Sorry if I went a little ahead of myself. Um, here's our domain that I drew before, crudely. Uh, we're saying that this is the I direction, and then this is the J direction. So here I'm going from the bottom left-hand corner, just because it kind of makes sense to go from the bottom left-hand ho hand corner, calling this 1, 1, and then going out to, you know, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, all the way out to here, and then up here would be 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, all the way up to J max. Um, so if you want to describe all the bottom boundary numbers here, you would say my u11 one, one is equal to, you know, 2. My u, and then I'm going to be moving out in the j's, would be 2, 1 is equal to 3. And my u31 is equal to 3. Like, that would specify this value here, 2, 3, 3. But in MATLAB, if you do it this way, what you're actually getting is if you're looking at your matrix, you're getting you're setting one one, which you'll set so you'll set this first value, row one, column one, because it's 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 labeled it's gonna be in MATLAB it's uh, U of row column. And then here you have U two one, so it's gonna be the second row, first column, so you're gonna get three. And then continuing on you get three here. So what you're doing is you're setting you're setting the values in kind of the opposite way that you thought you were. Um, which, as long as you keep the same notation all the way through, at the end, if you want to visualize everything normally, you can just transpose your matrix at the end, and it's the same thing. Um, I find I like to, uh, when I'm coding, I like to check the matrices um, to make sure I'm setting all the boundary conditions right every time. So what I like to do is I like to code it so that when I'm looking at the matrix here, it's actually physically what I think it is. So if I have, assuming I have this problem where it's, it's like the lid-driven cavity, which you might have heard of. I'm physically looking at the lid-driven cavity. The top wall is going to be moving at some velocity, and I'd like to. And so I set my boundary conditions at the top wall as a certain velocity. I'd like to be able to look at the matrix here and see all the numbers at the top here be the correct velocity. So if the velocity is two meters per second, I'd have all these values here be two. And then all these, you know, the ones at the wall would be zero based on your no-slip condition. Um, so I'd like to be able to physically look at this and, and see if I'm setting everything correctly. So to do it this way, though, what I like to do is I like to physically call the rows row, the columns call, and then code it that way. So when I'm setting these values, I can say, okay, row one, all columns. So in MATLAB, that would be, so if I want to set the, the U velocity, for row one, so that's row one, all columns is a semicolon, uh, sorry, just a colon. Um, so it'll be u one, all columns is equal to two meters per second. And that way it physically shows up as the lid is moving at two meters per second. And then the same way you can call all these things here. So those are just some of the, that's the way that we define, like the ij notation is how you're going to be able to define the grid when you're trying to derive finite differences to use in your um, governing equations. And then you also have to take note when you're coding that it's a little bit different um, in the way that you can uh,
call out the arrays and the matrices. So uh, that's just a, a warning, and we can talk about that more later in the videos when I get to the actual methods. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching.